Hey, I'm Johnny Tompkins, and today I'm going to talk to you about more things that I want from Bayonetta 3 that I somehow forgot to mention in my last video. So the first thing on my list of what I want to talk about are the Lumen Sage powers that Bayonetta is supposed to have, because her father was a Lumen Sage, and we've only seen her mother's side, you know, the witch side, the dark magic. We haven't seen her use any light magic or anything any of the Lumen Sages can do at all. And I always thought up to this point that we would see it in some way, shape, or form, but we never have. So I think that the third game would be the prime time to do that. Especially since there does seem to be this big theme of duality and like a lot of things I feel like are gonna clash in this game. Even if the colors are kind of a metaphor for that, how you have the red from the first game, the blue from the second game, and they're putting them together for the purple, it's all showing things both colliding and ripping apart, the duality, a bunch of things. And I can see them implementing that into gameplay somehow with her having the witch powers that we're used to and then Lumen Sage powers which we've yet to see. It could open up a lot of different avenues for more variety in the gameplay, which I think would be a lot of fun for people to, you know, experiment with and have different ways to play, different play styles maybe. It does seem like Platinum Games wants us to be like a bigger and even bolder direction with the whole formula of what we're used to with Bayonetta. And that would just be like kind of an obvious way to do it, but like in a good way. It's like a good obvious way. Like I want to see it. The second thing is that I want to see serious mode boss fights come back. You had this in the first game where you would go up against these gigantic bosses. In the first game, they would be the Cardinal Virtues, right? So you'd fight the Cardinal Virtues and she would let her hair down all along. And that would signify the fact that she is putting all her strength out right now. And every attack she does, you know, summons a Wicked Weave. The second game kind of got rid of that. So what the second game did was it took Serious Mode away and replaced it with Climax Mode, which you had to press to activate. And you could do that at any time. It wasn't just during these boss fights that you could have this climax mode active. And while I do love that as a gameplay mechanic, I still think that we should have moments where it shows that Bayonetta is getting serious and down to business against these bosses. And I think it also really helped for the scale of the boss fights. Which brings me to the third thing that I want from Bayonetta 3 that I forgot to mention in my last video. Somehow, those big scale boss fights, like what we had in the first game where you are kind of you're free to move around and attack the boss from however way that you want to. The second game had a lot of boss fights that were still pretty epic, very epic, but they did this thing where they kind of put you on rails for a lot of them. And what I mean by put you on rails is think about when you would fight Insidious or even sometimes fighting the Masked Lumen. It would do this thing where it would put you like to where she's flying in the air or in the case of Insidious, you know, floating in the water and you don't really have complete control over her like you usually do when you're running around a level like on the ground. And it takes a lot of your variety away from the kind of things that you can do in these fights. Like all you can really do is her standard combos when you're put on rails like that. Or you can really only just like shoot, like have weapons that shoot from afar. Like you can't mix up your gameplay with a mix of melee and a mix of projectile attacks. You have to only do one of those, which is the projectile attacks and like doing standard combos just to get the wicked weaves out to attack the boss from far away, which wasn't nearly as fun as the freeform boss fights that you kind of had in the first game where, yeah, there were segments where it kind of forced you to do certain things, you know, like running up Temperentia's arm or running around the Colosseum, but at the same time, you're still able to control her fully. Like you're, you are running around Temperentia's arm to go attack that little weak spot on it. You are running around the Colosseum and just hitting Fortitudo from every angle that you can or want to. The only fight I can think of that does this in Bayonetta 2 was the fight against Alrune. Alrune, Alron, I don't know how to say her name, but whatever. Yeah, the fight against her, especially when she turns into a giant beast, like that was the closest thing we had to the boss fights from the first game. It was sad to see that be the only way that you could kind of do that in the second game. Everyone else was on rails. Even when you refought Temperentia or the Cardinal Virtue of Justice or anything like that in the second game, you were kind of put on rails again. And the one time you fought Prudence, you were in like a giant mech suit, which also kind of stops your full potential of different fighting varieties. So I definitely want to see more boss fights like what we saw in Bayonetta 1, what we got to experience in Bayonetta 1, because they were very fun, had a huge scale, and you could just do whatever you wanted and it made it more satisfying in the end to me honestly because I I would beat the boss and be like yeah I did that doing everything I wanted to 
I just like used everything at my disposal to dispose of that boss, and it was epic. So the fourth thing that I want out of Bayonetta 3 is a longer story and game. I feel like Bayonetta 2 kind of took a step down from Bayonetta 1. Bayonetta 1 wasn't like the longest game or anything, but it felt, you know, like a satisfying length, especially with how at the end there were so many different twists and like every time you thought the game was over it threw something new at you and it was very fresh and fun. By the end of it all, I felt satisfied. Whereas with Bayonetta 2, and I guess you can view this as a good thing and a bad thing, so it's a good thing because when I beat Bayonetta 2, I wanted more, but it's a bad thing because I wasn't satisfied because I felt like there should have been more after that, you know what I mean? Like, it was shorter than Bayonetta 1, and on top of that, it didn't seem to really climax in the same kind of way Bayonetta 1 did, or even like in a comparable way that Bayonetta 1 did. It went for this whole like emotional climax thing and kind of sacrificed gameplay, which I wasn't a big fan of in comparison. So I'm really hoping that Platinum Games is making a really long game with Bayonetta 3, and it's very possible because, I mean, think about it, we haven't heard anything about this game in over two years, and on top of that, it's being developed for Nintendo Switch. So when you think about how much more time they're using to develop this game, and then the fact that it's on a more powerful console than the Wii U, even if it is just slightly more powerful, it's definitely more powerful. They're able to make a larger game, a longer game, and I'm excited to see that and I really do hope that that's the case. The fifth thing, and again, I don't know how I forgot to mention all these in my first Wishes for Pain out of 3 video, is a backstory to Rodan. So, in the realm of Bayonetta, obviously Bayonetta is my favorite character. Bayonetta is the coolest character to me, and I think she's amazing. The only other character in the series so far that I've kind of wanted to know more about as much as I wanted to know about Bayonetta was Rodan. No, not Jean. <laughs> Rodan. Honestly, I'm not the hugest fan of Jean. Like, she's cool and all. Rodan is the real uh, star of, you know, all of the side characters, and I, I just, I want Rodan to actually become more of a forefront in the character's aspect of Bayonetta 3. He's the only character that I feel like can challenge Bayonetta in a way of one, coolness, two, power, and three, intrigue. He is very intriguing and mysterious, much like Bayonetta. And yeah, I guess you can say Jean is mysterious and intriguing too. I feel like Jean, everything about her that we would find out would just kind of be runner-up to Bayonetta. So I want to explore Rodan more because he is a character that's completely different from Bayonetta. I feel like he's hiding so much behind his quips and his calm demeanor and it's just something I really want to see so bad I can't stress it enough. Honestly, I want to see more of Rodan than I do of Rosa because in the last video I said I wanted to see more of Rosa and her and you know this like mysteries behind her but Rodan would be like the absolute most wanted for me of who I want to know more about. Speaking of knowing more about characters, I want to see more insights into the characters of Bayonetta and Jean. So there's a lot of fun lore that rests behind Bayonetta and Jean. So Jean is a school teacher. I think it's like English? No, history. Yes, no. Ah, she, she teaches one of those. I think it's history. She's a, she's a history teacher at school. And behind the scenes, she's actually a local superhero, which I think they live in New York. So she's like a local superhero of New York. And so she teaches at the school by day. And at night, she's a superhero called Cutie J. And like fun things like that that just weren't implemented into the actual story. It crazes me that they didn't put that in. Like they have it written in books. Like you, when you go through the books of the game, you can read that and you find that out but they never show it in the cutscenes or with anything like that. They make their livings this way, so Jean's a teacher, that's how she makes her living. Bayonetta is a nun, I guess? Do nuns get paid? I don't know, maybe they just supply housing for nuns, I have no idea. So Bayonetta is a nun, and she even goes and helps Jean sometimes as a nun and like show, uh, shows the kids the Bible and, you know, teaches them the Bible, which I don't know how exactly she does that since she kills angels, but maybe she's telling the kids like don't believe this book or <laughs> if she's actually showing them the book like 
unironically, I really don't know. I really don't know. So I would really love to see more of that kind of stuff in Bayonetta 3, and I would love to see it implemented. Maybe the story even starts with them doing these things at the beginning. Like, it shows Jean teaching the classroom, Bayonetta helping out, you know, with, this, with the kids, like, with the Bible or whatever, and then something breaks out, or, you know, they have to, like, fight the angels right there, or something like that. I don't know. That'd be really cool and really fun. I, I want to see something like that. Another thing I really want is more adult characters. So right now I feel like we're kind of lacking in adult characters and the char adult characters that we do have act kind of childish. So like keep in mind, you know, like Luca and Enzo. Yeah, they're adults. Luca acts like a prepubescent boy. Enzo kind of just acts like a whiny child in general. The only true adults we have in this game are Bayonetta, Jean, and Rodan. And I I think we need more. We need more than that. Everyone else that's been an adult was a villain, and that was kind of, what, just Balder and... The Prophet, I don't even know whether to consider him a person, so... <laughs> I mean, he had, like, no personality. <laughs> I guess I may as well say, like, I want a better final boss in Bayonetta 3 than what we got with the Prophet, because that was kind of lame. Like, yeah, he turned into Aesir, whatever, but it was... I don't know. The character... <sighs> Like, there was no drive to beat him other than the game was telling us to. Like, he had no personality. I had no reason to despise or even like him. Like, he wasn't a likable villain either. I, don't, I, I didn't know what they were thinking when they made that character. We need more adult characters. I want not necessarily a way more mature story, but, I mean, I do want a story that kind of shows that it can take itself seriously at times. Like, yeah, we saw a few moments where it took itself seriously in Bayonetta 1 and 2, but I feel like we should bring a little more of that in as a constant on top of, you know, the the uh, campy humor, you know? We gotta keep the campy humor for sure, but I'd just rather see that with more adult characters rather than with lots of children joining the spotlight. And speaking of the story, I really just want the story to be more involved with its lore, like, in general. Yes, I mentioned that I want us to know more about Bayonetta and Jean and Rodan, and I want more adult characters, but there's a lot of lore to Bayonetta, which I think is one of its strongest aspects. When you read through those books and you see all these things about like the backstories of all these angels and the backstories of all these demons, things like that, but you never see those in the games. Like the cutscene where they'll have the introduction to these angels or demons, and then you kill them. Yeah, I'll see a few more later on. You don't get anything else other than that. But the backstories behind them are always really cool if you read the backstories. I'm hoping that we have enemies that it shows their backstories before we face them and it would just make it more of a drive for us to even fight them in the first place or maybe even feel guilty for fighting them which I would really like. I think Platinum Games is going to use a lot of its experience that it did when it created Nier to creating Bayonetta 3 because Nier had a really good story and a really good like morality system of like why you're doing certain things or if you should or shouldn't do certain things and things like that. And I think they can take the story in Bayonetta 3 up to the next level as well because of that experience. Another thing that I'm hoping for is more of a setup kind of like what Nier Automata had. So Nier Automata also played in chapters but it was also in an open world. So you got the best of both worlds. You had the open world where you could run around do whatever you want and then like fight enemies all stylishly. And then also like the story progressed and when you beat the game you can go back in chapters and do certain parts of the story. I really kind of hope that Bayonetta 3 is structured the same way. I do know that the developers of Bayonetta were teasing the fact that they were doing the sequence of how they're developing the game a lot differently from Bayonetta 1 and 2. And I don't know if they were hinting at this, that they were actually going to make it like an open world where like you later on go out in the chap back in the chapters or whatever. Or if it was just like completely unrelated to that and that they were just working on each set piece like as if it's, you know, just as important as every other set piece, you know, things like that. Because when you think about it, Bayonetta 1, like, had this escalation, and then Bayonetta 2 was, like, up here, and kind of stayed up here, but also was, like, dipping a few times. I don't know. So it wasn't, uh, it was paced better, but at the same time, the escalation wasn't there. So I'm thinking maybe Bayonetta 3 is gonna have 
something similar to the second game where the situations don't escalate, rather they stay at one level, but without all the dips that Bayonetta 2 had. Cause Bayonetta 2 had a few dips as it went on before going back up to that plateau level of like over the top action. Or maybe they're doing it to where there is an escalation again and <laughs> everything's just gonna keep topping itself like it did in the first game. Who knows, I would be happy with either one of those as long as they don't have those dips that the second game had. I do wanna see more environmental puzzles. I think that was part of the things that bogged down the second game for me. Well, when I'm talking about these dips, I'm talking about like time in between these epic set pieces. So Bayonetta 1, you would have time in between those epic set pieces as it escalated, but in those in-betweens, like you were doing environmental puzzles, like uh, temporal things, or even like finding a key and putting it in, you know, or platforming sections. And I really enjoyed those, and it added a lot of variety. The second game, when it slowed down in between the fights, it was pretty much just walking or just like seeing this one area but without anything to interact with. And I didn't really enjoy that as much because I'd rather have some sort of puzzle or something to keep my brain occupied other than just discovering this one area because then when I replay through that chapter and I'm at this area again, I've already looked all around it the first time I played it and got every item. I don't need to look around it again, but if I'm having to do a puzzle, I can be like, oh, this is that puzzle I had fun with the last time and I get to do it again. How fun! You know, something like that. I really want more of that in the third game again. And lastly, if we are going to see Loki or Cereza again, I want them to be older and mature. So. Obviously, uh, Loki, you know, Bayonetta would joke all the time like, Oh, you're a little boy. And he'd be like, I'm not a child. Bayonetta would be like, I hate kids. And Cereza would just whine, you know, things like that. I don't like kids, okay? I'll just say it. I don't like kids. I don't want them in my stories unless it's like actually productive. The fact that they were kids was not productive to the story at all. I guess Cereza kind of was. So I'm hoping that if Loki or Cereza comes back that they are older and that we just don't have to deal with children. <laughs> let's just not... Even Bayonetta herself says she doesn't like children so let's just put children in the past and forget about them. But yeah, those were more things that I wanted to see from Bayonetta 3 that I somehow forgot to mention in my last video. If you wanna see my last video, I'll put the link in the description below as well. And on top of that, please like and subscribe if you liked this video and let me know what you wanna see from Bayonetta 3 in the comment section. Also let me know your thoughts on what I wanna see <laughs> for Bayonetta 3 in the comment section. I also have my Patreon linked in the description below for anyone who wants to support me monetarily, which would be amazing because I could really use it and it would help me push out videos a lot faster. Either way, please share the video as well to help spread me around. Oh, that sounded wrong. Uh, but yes, yeah, spread me around, and um, I will see you guys next video.